Have you ever seen these before? They carry electricity to our homes across our cities and countrysides, but what do we really know about them? Hi everyone, my name is Valerie Miller and I'm the Outreach and Engagement Coordinator for Future Energy Systems. I am so excited to be with you today to share Future Energy Systems book, The Energy Adventures of Tommy and Remy. In this series, our intrepid energy adventurers are exploring the world of energy and climate change in search of ways that they can make a difference. Are you ready to join them? The Mystery of the Glowing Light was written by myself and illustrated by Caitlin Pulifa. Dr. Zhang Yi Kwan was our technical advisor and our editors were Kenneth Tam and Dr. Catherine Taze. Let's jump right in. Meet Tommy and Remy, best friends from Crescent Street, who explore the world together. With the help of Reginald, a former lab mouse, this dynamic duo always finds new questions to investigate. Their current energy adventures started like this. Remy, my humans are really worried about climate change, but I don't know what it is. Do you? Of course I do, Tommy. Climate change is clim changing how you climb trees. But that's not climate change. Climate means the average normal weather patterns that we see over a long, long time. And climate change is when those normal patterns change. Our climate is changing more quickly than ever because of gases in the sky that trap heat from the sun, like the roof of a greenhouse, greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases keep the earth warm so that we can live here, but too many gases can make our planet too warm. Many daily activities, including driving cars and generating electricity, can release a lot of greenhouse gases. Climate change will affect everyone in the world by causing hotter temperatures, melting polar ice, extreme weather, and changing habitats for our plants and animals. It's a scary challenge, but Remy and Tommy are learning about our energy systems and what we can all do to make a difference. Are you ready to join them? Remy leaps onto the fence, balancing with perfect precision on the thin wood. Rather proud of her athletic prowess, she prances back and forth in the warm sun. But when she looks down, she becomes confused when she sees her best friend Tommy laying in his doghouse, staring at the back door of his house. Tommy, what are you doing? She asks, jumping down. I'm looking at the lights, he answers. Remy turns and sees the glowing lights beside the door. Why? Well, how do they keep glowing, Tommy asks. Remy twitches her whiskers. She's not sure how the lights keep glowing, but she is a rather proud cat and doesn't want to admit it. Well, I think it's a bunch of fireflies. Really? Um, I'm not sure. We should ask Reginald, Tommy declares. Absolutely, Remy agrees. The dynamic duo run from the yard, Remy over the fence and Tommy under it, past the grassy path behind their homes and through the trees. They soon reach Reginald's home in the hollow of an old cedar stump. Hi, Reginald, they call. Hello, Tommy. Hello, Remy. Reginald waves and smiles at them. What are you up to today? We have a question, Remy says. There are lights outside Tommy's door that just keep glowing. How do they do that? Well, they use electricity, Reginald answers. What's electricity? Hmm, Reginald ponders her question. Electricity is a kind of energy, and energy is the ability to do work. I don't like work, Tommy moans. Reginald laughs, but you like chasing your ball and that takes energy. There are lots of kinds of energy and electricity is one of them. So how does electricity work? Let me explain. Reginald goes into his house to get his teaching supplies. The first thing you need to know is that everything around us is made of atoms and so are you. I'm made of atoms, Remy frowns. Yes, Reginald says. Me too, Tommy asks. Everything. Atoms have three parts. In the center, which is called the nucleus, there are protons and neutrons. Protons are positive, Reginald explains. They're happy, Tommy asks. I'm always positive. Yes, you are, Reginald laughs. But I mean, it has a positive charge. Neutrons have a neutral charge, which means they are not positive or negative. Pointing outside the nucleus, he says, moving around the center of the atom are the electrons, which have a negative charge. Negative like Remy, Tommy teases. I'm not negative, Remy huffs. I'm a realist. Reginald continues before their teasing can get out of hand. 
positive charges are attracted to negative charges and repel other positive charges. Think of a magnet. An atom balances the positive and negative charges like a teeter-totter, Reginald explains, but outside forces can cause an atom to gain or lose electrons. These free electrons can jump from atom to atom. This free movement of electrons creates an electric current. What makes the electrons move, Tommy asks. One way is to use magnets, Reginald says. If you, use, if you move a magnet through a coil of wire, it causes the electrons in the wire to move, producing an electric current. The same happens if you move a coil of wire through a magnetic field. We can use the interaction between magnets and the wire to generate electricity. This electricity can be used to do lots of things in our houses. Think about every device your humans plug in, Reginald continues. Is the electricity made in the plug, Tommy asks? Reginald shakes his head with a smile. I think you need to go on a trip with one of my friends to learn more about how and where electricity is generated. Batteries can store energy for humans to use, so not everything that uses electricity is plugged in. And here he is now. Reginald waves as a pigeon lands beside them. Remy, Tommy, this is my friend Nick. Nick, my friends want to know how electricity gets to their homes. Can you show them? Of course, Nick Coos, I fly around the electrical grid every day. Come on, I'll show you. Nick is named after Nikola Tesla, a famous scientist and inventor whose work played an essential role in the generation, transmission, and use of electricity in the late 1800s. Nick takes off and Tommy and Remy eagerly follow him. What's the electrical grid, Remy asks, already out of breath because she's not used to this much running. The grid is made up of the structures and networks that bring electricity from where it's generated to where it's used, Nick calls down. Nick lands outside a large building and Tommy and Remy skid to a stop. This is a power plant, Nick coos. Most of the electricity used today is generated in power plants. Electricity is generated by transforming it from different sources of energy, Nick explains. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, just transformed. This is the law of conservation of energy, the first law of thermodynamics. What sources do we use to generate electricity? Tommy asks, wagging his tail excitedly. All kinds, Nick says. Inside the power plant, we have a machine called a turbine, which looks like a fan. Humans use other forms of energy to make it spin, and when it spins really fast, it helps generate electricity. I could run on a really big hamster wheel to make it spin, Tommy offers. Coo coo, Nick laughs. You look pretty fast, Tommy, but we need something bigger to generate enough electricity to turn on all the lights and everything else humans need. Nick gestures towards the turbine. There are many ways to spin the turbine. If water pushes it, it's called hydropower. By burning materials like coal or biomass, we can heat water and produce steam, which spins the turbine. Biomass is plant or animal matter, for example, wood, crops, and some kinds of waste. Geothermal power uses the heat from the center of the earth, taking it from underground to produce steam and spin the turbine. In nuclear energy, splitting atoms produces large amounts of heat that can produce steam and spin the turbine. We can burn materials called fossil fuels, like natural gas, oil, or diesel, to produce steam or other hot gases to spin the turbine. We can even use the wind to spin the blades of a wind turbine, but generally that doesn't happen in a power plant. This turbine spins a shaft which is connected to a generator. Nick points to the next part. Inside the generator are magnets and wires. That's what Reginald said. We can produce electricity with a magnet and wire, Remy recalls. Exactly, Nick confirms. The shaft will rotate a magnet inside a coil of wires, or a coil of wires, wires will rotate surrounded by magnets. This generates lots of electricity. But do we need a lot of electricity here? Remy looks around. There doesn't seem to be anyone around to use it. You're right, Nick Coos. Power plants are often located far away from the places people need electricity. That means we need a way to get it to them. We do this using a series of wires. You've seen some of them already. Power lines are some of my favorite places to perch. Nick takes off into the air, flying past huge metal structures linked by wires. The humans call these big wires transmission lines because they transmit or carry the electricity from the power plant to where it's needed. 
They look like giant robots, Tommy whispers, and Remy chuckles. But when electricity has to travel far, some of it can be lost, Nick explains. That's why humans first use transformers to increase the voltage. It reduces the loss. Nick continues, closer to cities, substations reduce the voltage. Then distribution lines, like the ones you see here, or those underground, bring the electricity to neighborhoods. Remy watches with envy as Nick lands and balances on a wire beside a house. Hmm, I can't balance that well. Nick says, in your neighborhood, a smaller transformer lowers the voltage again, and the wires bring the electricity into your house so you can use it. Voltage is the push that causes electrons to move, generating an electric current flow in a circuit. And that is how electricity gets to your home, Nick coos, taking off again and leading the dynamic duo back to Reginald's. As the long journey tires her out, Remy asks, this is such a long path. Wouldn't it be easier if we made electricity at home? Some people do, Nick says, but that's an adventure for another day. Then he coos with a laugh. Thanks for the shocking good time. Bye, Nick, Tommy barks as the pigeon flies away. Thank you, Remy calls after him. Reginald emerges from his stump. Well, my friends, did you learn a lot? Yes, we learned how electricity is generated and gets to our homes using the electrical grid, Tommy replies. I do have one question. Remy tilts her head. We learned about electricity, but are electricity and climate change connected? They are, Remy, Reginald confirms. Many of the energy sources that humans use to make electricity release greenhouse gases. Remember those? As Remy and Tommy nod, he continues. As humans keep generating more and more electricity, those greenhouse gases add up and have a big impact. So what can we do, Tommy asks. Humans still need their lights and their devices, so I guess they can't just stop generating electricity. That's true, Reginald degrees, but some sources of energy don't release greenhouse gases, like wind or geothermal energy. Many humans are working hard to mix those sources into the grid. Then he pauses thoughtfully. But it can take a long time to make big changes, and as you saw, the grid is very big. So we also need to do something right now. What? What? Remy and Tommy chant. Each one of us can start by using less electricity, Reginald explains. Think about all the things in your house that use electricity. If we use less electricity, then we don't need to make as much, meaning we release fewer greenhouse gases. Reginald instructs, turn things off when you leave a room. Unplug things you're not using. Use natural light and cool wind rather than lamps and air conditioners. Reduce how much electricity you use, and you'll play an important part in helping fight climate change. Remember to ask permission before unplugging things in your home, as some things should not be unplugged or must be unplugged carefully. Oh, thank you, Reginald. We'll do all of that, Remy promises. Wonderful, Reginald smiles, but that's just the beginning. There's a lot more for us to learn about energy, so I'll see you soon for our next energy adventure. Excited by their new discoveries, Tommy and Remy run home. They are eager and ready to start reducing the amount of electricity their houses use. What will you do? Do you have any ideas of what you can do to reduce your electricity use in your home? What about in your school? Now that you've learned all about electricity and how it's made and gets to your home, it's time to explore more with our extra activity package that you can find linked below. In that, you'll find activities like word searches, mazes, coloring pages, and more. As well, you'll also find our exciting activity where you can build your own electrical circuit, just like the one in Reginald's house. Keep exploring the energy all around you, and Tommy, Remy, Reginald, and I will see you next time. Bye!